Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Offbit. Today we're going to be looking at the Intel HT 2000 graphics from our Sandy Bridge i5-2320. This is sometimes referred to as the onboard graphics or the iGPU. We'll be running a handful of benchmarks and trying out a few games. What relevant games for 2021 can we find to play on this machine and how playable will they be? That is our question. So stick around and find out. This is our Intel i5-2320. This i5 was released on the 4th of September 2011 for the LGA 1155 platform. This CPU is based on the Sandy Bridge 32 nanometer architecture. The i5-2320 is a 4-core, four 4-threaded four CPU clocked at 3GHz with 6 meg of L3 cache. It can consume up to 95 watts according to its TDP. The i5-2320 also comes with its own integrated graphics the Intel HD Graphics 2000, or also named the Sandy Bridge GT1. Clock for the on-chip GPU is between 850MHz to 1100MHz for the i5-2320, and is said to be the sixth generation of the Intel graphics architecture. The on-chip GPU has six execution units and 48 shading units. API supported by the HD Graphics 2000 are DirectX 11.1, according to techpowerup.com, OpenGL 3.1, it has no support for OpenCL and uses shader models 4.1. Though it is noted by techpowerup that GPU can have problems at times and we did run into this with a couple of benchmarks refusing to run in a couple of games. The motherboard we have today is the Dell CN-0XR1GT from a Dell Inspiron 660 or the Dell Vostro 270. This motherboard is an LGA 1155 motherboard using the B75 Express chipset. The motherboard supports up to two sticks of DDR3 RAM, comes with a single PCI Express X16 slot for a proper GPU. It has four SATA 3 ports and all the other necessary ports on the back to get you connected. The RAM we're using today is from Kingston. This is the KVR 1333 D39K2 4/8G. This is an 8 gig kit of DDR3 1333 MHz RAM in a two stick kit combo. Finally, the drives we're using today are, well, we're using the standard drives as usual. Our operating system sits on a 120 gig Western Digital Green SSD. We have the Silicon Power 256 gig SSD for games, and we also have a one terabyte Western Digital Green magnetic drive as well for some of the other games. We are running Windows 10 build 1909. Let's check out the benchmarks. For the benchmarks, first up we tried the i5-2320 in 7-zip. Our single core strength for the i5-2320 was pretty comparable across the board, sitting behind the 3rd gen i5 and in front of the core 2 quad Xeon. In the multi-core benchmark, the i5-2320 sat behind the i5-3550 and in front of the i7-760, which is about where it should be sitting. Moving on to CPUID's CPU-Z benchmark. The i5-2320 single core sat just behind the i7-760, but stayed in front of the i3-2120. In the multi-core performance, it really pushed ahead, lagging behind just the i5-3550. Finally, for the CPU benchmarks, the i5-2320 sat in third place for the Cinebench R15 test, lagging behind the i5-3550 and lagging behind the i7-950 as well. By the looks of things, this CPU will be more than adequate for the games we'll be trying to play today. Though I think the extra performance will be wasted being paired with the internal GPU, the HD 2000 graphics from Intel. Now we've mentioned the elephant in the room, let's talk about it. The Intel HD 2000 scored in Cinebench 11.5 a score of 7.8 frames per second. Wow, that sounds bad. The iGPU fell behind the GTS 430 and even the 9500 GT. It also fell behind the GT 220. This does not look great for this iGPU. Next up we tried the stress test for Counter-Strike Source. Once again we did sit back in the benchmarks, but not as bad as what we saw in Cinebench 11.5. The iGPU scored a respectable 56.12 frames per second, and this should be quite playable in Counter-Strike Source. We did sit behind everything else once again, being beaten by the 9500 GT. 
Before we move on to the games, we also wanted to mention we did try running 3D Mark Cloudgate on this IG view, but alas, it would only just crash when we launched the benchmark. Something we did come across a few times with this iGPU, in games and other applications. The GPU is just a little bit strange. We're thinking it could be something to do with the drivers that we're using, but unfortunately these are the latest drivers we could find from Intel. So this just looks like a problem we're just going to have to work around and deal with. Now, to the games. The first game we have up once again is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. We ran CSGO at 1280 by 720 at low details. The game did run sluggish at best, it did not net us a great gaming experience, though the frame rates did not bob around too much which probably helped with a more consistent gaming experience. It still was not enough to make us convinced that this is a good game for this setup. Unfortunately we can't get the usual metrics from this game, so we had to observe the frame rates by eye. Counter-Strike Global Offensive frame rates generally set between 13 to 28 frames per second, with an approximate average frame rate of 20 frames per second. Like we said, we do not recommend this game for this setup. Counter-Strike in general is a game you need to play with high frame rates. Its nature of being a competitive first person shooter, in our thoughts, it's imperative to have a high smooth frame rate to play this game with any joy. Next game we had on our list was Starbound. We ran Starbound at 1024 by 768 at low details. The game itself ran fairly poorly on this system, though it had consistent low frame rate, which probably made the game a bit more playable. Saying playable is borderline. We wouldn't recommend this game with the HD 2000 graphics on this setup. The frame rates for Starbound were average frame rate was 16.9 frames per second with a minimum frame rate falling to 1.9 frames per second. Our maximum frame rate hit 18.7 frames per second and our 0.1% lows was at 1.1 frames per second. Like we said before, this game did not run great with an average frame rate 16.9 frames per second and really we have not even got into busy areas. So on that note alone, we cannot recommend Starbound on this setup. Moving right on and sticking to the 2D games genre, the next game we have today is Stardew Valley. We ran Stardew Valley at 1920x1080 on default settings. Stardew Valley ran fantastic on the machine, very much so in contrast to Starbound. This game is very much a fun RPG game and is very well known in the community. If you have not heard of this game, we would recommend giving it a go. And in saying that, we'd also recommend this game for anyone running Intel iGPU graphics from the Sandy Bridge range and up. Let's talk about the frame rates of Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley frame rates were 59.4 frames per second for average frame rate. Minimum frame rate hit 25.9 frames per second. Our maximum frame rate hit 60.9 frames per second. Our 0.1% lows hit 1.7 frames per second. As the data shows us, this game ran very well on the system with maybe a few lags here and there, but nothing that should cause any issues in this game being the type of game it is. So, that's a big thumbs up for Stardew Valley on the Intel HD 2000 graphics from the Offbit team. Next up, we tried our hand at the Escapist 2. The Escapist 2 we ran at 1024 by 768 on low settings. We found this game virtually impossible to play, with a low frame rate and very very high input lag. It was very hard to get your character to do what you wanted it to do. With an input lag sitting somewhere in about 500 millisecond bracket, we needed to pre-anticipate what we were going to do with our keystrokes for our character. Now this game is already challenging enough. Adding an input lag part due to poor performing hardware makes this game impossible and in our mind, unplayable on this system. So let's look at the frame rates. Frame rates for Escapers 2 were average frame rate hit 9.9 frames per second, our minimum frame rates hit 5.4 frames per second, our maximum frame rate hit a low 14.4 frames per second, ouch, and our 0.1% lows was 1.9 frames per second. Now, the data shows us exactly that this game did not perform well, as we pointed out. Our max FPS was at 14.4 frames per second. There is just no hope for running this game on the Intel HD 2000 graphics. So, we recommend staying away from this game with a PC setup like the one we have here today. Moving back to those games that have that extra dimension, the next game we played was Team Fortress 2. We ran Team Fortress 2 at 1280 by 720 at low settings. The game ran well, but not perfect, 
though very much still playable. With most of the game running about 40 to 50 frames per second, and there was a lot going on in this battle. The H2 2000 graphics seems to just hold its ground during this game. Frame rates for Team Fortress 2 were average frame rate of 51.2 frames per second, our minimum frame rates hit 18.8 frames per second, our maximum frame rate hit a whopping 248.9 frames per second, which happened, I think, when it had still images on the screen, and our 0.1% lows hit 1.8 frames per second. As we stated, this game was not perfect, but played quite well. If you're looking for a fun first-person shooter game for your HD 2000 iGPU graphics, then give Team Fortress 2 a go. You'll need to turn the graphics back and even going lower resolution will probably net you much better frames per second. So try it out and see what you think. Our final game today is Blizzard's StarCraft 2. We ran StarCraft 2 at low settings with a resolution of 1280 by 720. The game gave us a very smooth gaming experience at these settings with only a few minor glitches and hiccups in the frame rates. Benchmarks for StarCraft 2 were our average frame rate was 70.5 frames per second with a minimum frame rate of 27.9 frames per second. Our maximum frame rate hit 91.6 frames per second and our 0.1% lows was at 1.7 frames per second. As the data shows, this game ran, at most of the time, very smooth, with a little bit of load lag from time to time, which we saw in our 0.1% lows. It didn't look like that it had much bearing on the minimum frame rates, which basically what we felt during our gameplay. We can highly recommend this setup and this game together. Thumbs up for StarCraft 2 in the Intel HD 2000 graphics, but keep in mind, you'll need to drop some of those graphics back. Now it's worth mentioning some of the games and applications we had problems that we ran into. 3 d Mark Cloudgate would crash every time we ran the benchmark. We could not get Rocket League to run. We also had problems trying to run Fortnite. Now, there may be workarounds for these problems, but straight out of the box, with the latest Intel drivers that we could find on their website, was a no-goose situation. Now our final thoughts with our i5-2320 and using its iGPU for the Intel HD 2000 graphics. The CPU in our thoughts is still very much a capable CPU for gaming, within limits of course, but using the on-chip GPU in conjunction with the CPU, we really do not recommend this if you're planning to use it for gaming. It would be very much worth it though if you have the option to purchase a discrete GPU. It does not take much to beat the HD 2000 graphics as we saw in our benchmarks. However, we could recommend if you're looking at getting a dedicated GPU, you want to look for a card that at least has DirectX 11 support. This being anything from the NVIDIA 400 Fermi series and up should have you looked after in the DirectX 11 department. Now if you're not planning to play games or the games you plan to play are nothing more than maybe Stardew Valley, then yes, this setup would suit an office PC or a very, and I mean very basic gaming PC. Retro titles should be okay as well since DirectX 9 ran quite well with this GPU. Once again, that's all we have for you today at the Offbit. So we'd like to thank you for watching our video. Now, if you like this video, please don't forget to hit that like button. Also, we at the Offbit are trying to get our community base up. So if you like our content and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. This will encourage us here at the Offbit to keep on making videos and it will give everyone a wider community to help and support each other through our builds and our gaming system problems. And also, before we go, please feel free to leave a comment. Thanks once again, and we'll catch you next time on The Offbit.